Hello everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to be going through the new Fades Layout Generator plugin. Uh, this plugin is similar to the previous Fades plugin in that it will create macros that will assign fade times to sequences for you. Uh, however, it has been expanded on from that. Um, first off, obviously, we are now looking at uh, an image-based system for a layout. Uh, that way you can integrate it with, if you've got a color picker layout or whatever else you're doing in a layout that's show-based, uh, you can now incorporate this into it and allows you to size more appropriately uh, to whatever you're doing. Um, and we have our visual feedback from the images. Um, the next big thing is for the first time for any of my layout based plugins, uh, you can actually change the images that you use with this. So you can either, it comes with five different uh, sets of colors for this, uh, as well as the ability to substitute in your own custom images into the plugin. Um, I'm going to explain how to do custom images in a separate video, uh, but I will be showing you some of the colors uh, in this video. So, uh, with that said, uh, let's take a look at the system that it creates, and then we'll get into the installation and then the uninstallation of it. So, uh, starting off, again, we have our layouts, uh, our layout already generated here. Uh, we've got five macros in it. I've got five times in here, uh, and I have a position executor selected right now. And we can see in our sequence sheet up here that as I click on different numbers, that our fade time is adjusting to match it. Um, as expected. Uh, so if we right click on one of these, we can see what's going on inside of these trigger macros. Um, so first off we have, we're just setting a variable, then we fire another macro that'll actually do the assigning, uh, and then we're handling our images to get our visual feedback. Uh, if we look at that execution macro, if I right click on this, it will say assign whatever your range is, in this case any sequence ending in underscore POS, and any uh, Q inside of those sequences, we're setting those fade times to whatever our variable is. And the reason I put this in a separate macro is so that if you decide that you're changing what you're storing to, whether it is you're not using wildcards to determine yours if you're doing it by sequence number, executor number, uh, pages, whatever, uh, you can set it up on multiple lines on here and if you realize you've either made a mistake or you need to include something new or exclude something you had before, uh, all you have to edit is one macro instead of having to go into every single one of these, edit it, and hope that you got all five of them consistently, well, consistent with each other. Um, so this just removes another step of issues uh, faster to update and removes the possibility of fat fingering something when you are making that adjustment. Uh, that's pretty much it for what it's doing. You got a layout, it's firing these macros, those macros fire this one, and those set a fade time. Uh, so that's everything in the layout. Uh, it is important to point out here that uh, Lua is not doing anything once the layout is installed. Um, I only say that because there are some users who are concerned with having plugin scripts running during a show. Uh, so I did just, just want to clarify that what we are looking at here is just macro operation. There's no Lua anything uh, once the installation is done. Uh, so with that said, um, we're going to get into a little bit later as well, but as far as if anybody's concerned about incorporating this layout uh, into another layout, um, if you have not seen the merging layouts video, uh, it is as simple as, I'll show the command line here, copy one layout, oops, well, copy one layout at the other, we merge, and if we go into that layout, we can see that our components are now included, although I didn't really have them in the best position for that. Um, so we can reposition them in here, move them, whatever. Uh, anyways, just saying that so that you all guys are aware that you can incorporate this generated layout, uh, the components of it, into another layout. So you're not just stuck with five different layouts for one for each separate thing you're doing. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the installation process. So right now I've got three of the colors pulled up in here, red, blue, and green. Um, I used the blue one for our position setup. So if I right click on that, uh, it'll pull up our configuration settings. I'm just going to go through these and uh, explain kind of what each of them are for. So the top three are the main ones we're concerned with. The first one is the name of the installation. And what this changes is how your macros are named. Your macros, your, uh, I renamed that, but your macros, your... Uh, layout. Uh, that's pretty much it, actually. Um, and what's important about that is that these 
macros are firing the execution macro by its name. Um, so if we, anytime the set a variable, they fire this guy by its name. And that's important because if we want to have multiple installations, we need each of these to have a unique name. So this one is set up position fades. Uh, the next one is going to be color fades. Um, the naming of it also influences the uninstaller. We'll get into the details of how later, but um, do be aware the naming of it is how the uninstaller will know which macros, images, and layout to delete. Now if we go back to our configuration settings, uh, next we have our variable name. This will be the variable that's being set. Uh, be aware it is a global variable, not a user variable. Um, a user variable would not prove very helpful in a multi-user setting or if you just change profiles. Um, anyways, uh, no dollar sign in front of it. The plugin automatically adds that for you. Um, and again, this is to allow multiple installations at the same time. We've got this one set up. This is the blue one we were just looking at. We've got this one set up for positions. Change this to color for a color one, which is what we're going to do here in a moment, um, or change it to all if it's going to be affecting anything that you want affected by the macros. The third item down is going to be your default target range. Um, as with the delay sweeps plugin, you can put multiple lines in here. So I could do that, oops, uh, and then change whatever is in here. Um, by default, I only put one line in there because I figure most people are only going to be using one line. Uh, but this changes what gets automatically stored into this macro, the, into the execution macro. So it'll fill that space in here. It'll say assign whatever you put in there, slash fade equals the variable. Um, if you want to add more lines, again, you can just add the extra lines after, or you can set it up in your user configuration. If it's going to be a common setup, you know you'll be reusing. Uh, but this is that's the only line it edits. So if you miss that, it's not the end of the world. It's super easy to fix. Um, trigger macro is number. This will change whether it fires the execution macro by its number or by its name, as is shown over here. It'll set the variable and it'll either fire by number if you've set it to true or by name if you set it to false. Setting it by name allows you to move the macros around later if you need to reorganize your macro pool. So I've made that the, the default. Um, but I've provided the option should you want to use it. Um, below that, all we have is the, um, <clears throat> all we have, sorry, are the starting locations for all of our generated items. So for our image, for our macro, uh, images, macros, layout, um, this is where it's gonna start looking. As with any of my other plugins, it will make sure that the space is empty before it tries storing anything there. So you don't have to worry about anything being overwritten. Um, and that's it. So if I exit out of that and we edit our green one, uh, I've already got this one set up for colors. So I've renamed the installation name color, renamed the variable to fade underscore col, and my target range is all cues in any sequences that end in underscore col. Uh, everything else stay the same. These defaults are for my file. I'll set them all to one for the public release. And that's it. So let's run it. Um, First off, let's run our blue one again, because it's got settings we've already used. So it'll pop up, ask if we have already checked our user config. We'll say OK. Um, it will see that there's a naming conflict. So if you are trying to reuse an installation name, it will see that, and it will warn you um, when you run the uninstaller at whatever point, uh, it will delete all installations that match that name. So it will let you continue if you choose to do that for whatever reason. Um, but be aware this will mess up the uninstaller. Uh, also, if you're sharing variable names, they're more more—they're basically linked at that point. Uh, one will affect the other. So we're gonna cancel that, and we're gonna run our green one that has separate settings. Our installation name, color, that tells us the, the name of the execution macro that'll be generated as a result, and it gives us the variable that will be getting used with these macros. So we check all that, make sure that we're good, that we entered everything, that we didn't forget whatever we meant to do, and we say OK. It'll pull us up to a screen. Um, all the names, all the timings are shown underneath because I didn't expect the images to be super readable even if the colors weren't killing it. So we're going to use the same times we had on our position set up again. So 0, 1, 2, 4, 8. We hit enter when we're done, and it'll install the layout for you. Um, gives brings you to this confirmation screen. Primarily what we're looking for right now is the layout number and where our macros were stored at. Um, but mostly I'm just looking for where our layout is and that is number five in this case. So 
I'm going to move that guy down with our other one. If we click on this, we see we have a green version of the same thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put these layouts together. I'm going to shuffle these guys up just a little bit. And I'm going to copy this macro at this one, merge them together. Oops. And now we've got them both in the same view. All right, so if I select one of my color executors, uh, we can see that as I click through these, my fade time changes accordingly. Uh, and obviously my position ones do not affect it. Same thing goes for position. If I select that, color ones do not affect that, but my position macros do, which means everything is working as we had hoped for it to. Um, so that is the entire process of installing. It's not super complicated. I've just made sure, I'm trying to make sure to go through um, all of the details involved in it. Now, as far as the uninstallation goes, a um, couple of notes to make. Uh, you may notice that all of these macros have an info field in them. And when we click info on any of them, we are seeing fades, layout, and then a color, or the installation name. So in this case, it was color. But if I hit one of these, we see it's POS. Um, this info field exists on all the macros that are generated, it exists on the generated layout, and it exists on the generated images. And the reason for this is that the uninstaller is also Lua based, and the way it's going to find the things to remove is by looking for this info field. And so it's gonna find any of these components that have that same uh, information in their info field and delete those. And that allows you to, again, if you need to reorganize your macro pool, you need to reposition the layout, um, you can move it around and the uninstaller won't delete the wrong thing. That said, when you run the uninstaller, let's say now that we have, oops, um, now that we've put two things together in here, we don't want this to get removed. All we have to do is say lock that layout, or we can edit the info field and remove it. Uh, I'm gonna go with lock for now, uh, and that will prevent um, that from being deleted during the uninstallation. So if I go over here, and I run our uninstall color fade macros, it will say okay, it'll reconfirm, we'll say okay again, it'll run, it'll tell us it is completed. If we check our system monitor, we will see all of the commands that were executed, which is just delete macros, delete images, delete layout. Uh, since we did have our layout locked, we see that the layout is not gone, even though the objects in it are. And I guess if we unlock it, we can then delete those. But anyways, so that is how the uninstaller works. Um, one last note on the uninstaller, and I'll make sure to add in a line uh, for this. I'm actually going to make a little star right now. Um, one thing to know about this is it is running a Lua command, and the code for that Lua command does live inside of the installers. So you don't need each installer left behind. As long as you have one of these behind, uh, the code is available for it to use. So as long as you have one installer plugin in your show file, it'll work. If you don't, it won't do anything. So you'll have to re-import the plugin to be able to run the uninstaller in that situation. Uh, and I think that's it. So, uh, you guys can download this plugin at my website, geoffadesigns.com. Uh, link is in the description below. You can contact me on Facebook and through my website if you have any comments, questions, or requests for new plugins or tutorials. There is a mailing, mailing list on the site. Uh, you can subscribe on here, uh, all the social media things. I uh, hope you guys find some use for it, uh, and happy programming. <laughs>